Here we go again, y'all. Nate Davis. This time we got a four of a high DPFE sensor voltage. The here I'm showing the students how to use a scan to identify yeah, the wires, so you can so you can check the circuit. Tracer. Yes, ma'am. Signal return wire is the ground. Right now, he's doing. He's back probing the wires, identifying them, so we can check for the proper voltage on each terminal. Yeah, that's the signal, right? Yeah. Okay. The middle one. This was the five volts. The five volts is this one here. Okay, the middle one's ground, right? Yeah. Okay. Ground is the middle one. All right. The confirm got the same one. It was like ground holder. Once you got the same number here, what I'm gonna do, make sure they got the same number on the pin and on the terminal. Okay. Point four right there, right? Yeah. So I should have the same number right here. There you go, here you go. Now we're gonna trying to make sure we got a good connection with that T pin. So we're checking the voltage in the front and behind that terminal. This car came with a high. Uh, I'm sorry. This car came with a high DPFE sensor voltage reading. We try to troubleshoot it. See if it's a sensor or the plug line yeah, or an electrical problem. Yeah, that sensor in the back, right next to the firewall. It's a pretty tight spot. Look at this voltage right there. I want to scan until it's reading 4. Point, I think it's 4.6 volts, 4.68 volts. See, see this right here? Look how I have to through there. You see it went back up to 4.5 volts? Yeah. Most likely, this is reading that signal wire. Yeah, 4.9 so volts. Using our volt meter so, so scan is showing the voltage already high, but we're going to use a voltmeter and yeah, confirm that it's really high. Yeah, I got it. I did. Yeah, with yeah, the actual uh, voltmeter at the sensor. See, that's 4.9 volts, so we're going to use a voltmeter and check it at the sensor. It should be within 10% of the reading. You can see right now the voltmeter is reading about 5 volts, indicating that it, the code is incorrect. The code is correct saying that the sensor voltage is high. Yeah, that, that sensor is way over the number. Way out of limits. But we could just do the scan tool, but I just want to show you how to do the different, you know, yeah, how you actually test the circuit. Yeah, the whole thing. Alright, you can turn it on. Y'all, you got, you understand? Gonna do, right now we're reading, what are we reading? Zero right now, so you're gonna do, you're gonna jump the, you're gonna jump the power to the signal. Now we're doing a check and make sure the wires are good going back to the PCM. Yeah. We're going to send 5 volts back to the signal wire and see if the PCM reads it like it's doing right now, which is good. Oh, good. Then we're going to do the same thing with the ground wire. Jump the ground to the signal wire and see does the hey, PCM read the ground. This confirms that the wires that's and PCM are working correctly and the terminals are good. Yeah. 
And the wire's nice sure enough. Alright. Now you're gonna let the ground. No, 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 we like lights. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah, I gotta get a good picture here. Alright. That confirms both wires are working. Right? One more time. Alright. Alright. Now we're going to do a check to each other's solenoid and make sure that each other's getting back here. We're going to use a scan tool to activate, do a self test and activate the solenoid. And use vacuum gauge to make sure uh, the vacuum is going through the solenoid when the, when the computer commands the solenoid to come on. So right now you check and see if the voltage is going into the solenoid. It's a two wire solenoid. One wire should have voltage going in and another one's going to have a bias voltage. It's a ground control solenoid. So remember one wire is going to be power, the other one is going to be control which is the ground side. Well if it disconnected we should see power on one. One other wire should be a bias voltage which I need to explain later on some other time. I need to move that volt meter in a good spot. I can't even see it. Let me see if it works. Check the power again. Oh, you can't even see it. Got that. So you see we've got power going to the solenoid. Now we're going to check the other wire. and see a bias voltage, which is good. That's the, that's the ground side, control side. Now once we plug it in, we're going to have 11.7 uh, 12 volts on both sides because remember we don't have a ground yet. Remember there's no Remember there's no ground. Remember it's 11 volts going in through the solenoid winding and out back to the computer. So I should have system voltage on both sides Now we're going to use a scan tool and activate the solenoid and watch the voltage change. I had to move that throttle so it can actuate the actuator some forwards. Yeah. See it went from 11.7 to near zero indicating that the computer controlled the ground side. Ground. Ground, yeah. Right? And then drop. Yeah. I can suppose. So now you go to near zero, we gotta got transistors and some other stuff in the computer. But I did drop. Now you're gonna run the self test with the scan tool. Watch the back engage move. See it just move? Yeah, it moves, right? Doing the self test, the computer activates the actuators. And one actuator is each of our solenoid. So we check with vacuum coming out that solenoid by running the self test, which is a indicating that it works. Now we diagnose a bad a sensor. You're going to replace the sensor and pin on the, on the mission analyzer. This car is fixed and ready for a small check. Now look at the DPFE voltage, 1.56. Look at the duty cycle. That's the EGR solenoid being commanded by the PCM to turn the EGR valve on. And we can see the change using looking at the the DPF 
E voltage. So each drop percentage is a computer command to turn the each solenoid on, and a DPFE is seeing the pressure dif pressure differential in the uh, exhaust system for the EGR circuit. I hope this helped you a little bit. Uh, please hit the like button and check me out at Abram Free Mock Official Center. Peace. Nate Davis, aka Small Dog. That's my dog right there. The loud one.